Am I the a hole for laughing when my brother-in-law was berating my little sister? For some background, my parents have three kids, Maya, 29 years old, me, 28 years old, and Sally, 26 years old. The problem is Sally. When she was born, she had some form of medical condition which led doctors to believe that she won't survive at all. But my parents never gave up. They spent money and time for her treatment and miracle happened. Since then, they have coddled Sally to death. Sally always had to have good things. I mostly got my sister's hand-me-downs, which I didn't mind, but it sucks that I was the forever neglected middle child. But my sister Maya took most of it. Maya was the oldest and the scapegoat. For some weird reasons, Sally was always in competition with Maya and I am sure my parents also pitted them against each other too. Maya was always supposed to behave and never complain, while Sally was a brat. If Maya had a dollhouse, Sally had a bigger dollhouse. If Maya did something good, my parents would just say, good job, and go on about their life. But if Sally even won a participation trophy, they would basically throw a party. Since then, Maya has been walking on eggshells around my parents. She would always be grounded and we cannot even complain that Sally has been bullying us because she is a special child. Sally was also awful towards me. She would often abuse me and even steal my stuff and my parents won't do anything. And like I mentioned, Sally was always in competition with Maya. If Maya wanted to participate in music, she would too. I remember Maya saying in high school that she has a crush. What does Sally do? Make out with that crush in front of Maya. My parents didn't even save enough for college for either of us, but luckily for Maya, she got on scholarship. I had to take out a loan. The last straw for Maya was when she was dating this guy in college. She brought him home when they were on vacation. She caught Sally and him having sex in the basement. It was a shit storm. My parents did berate Sally, but after a few days they were like, and what happened just happened. It will be wrong to separate these lovebirds. That was it for Maya. She screamed at them that she has endured their abuse for all these years, but not anymore. She cut off contact. There was a lot of tension. Some of my uncle and aunt were divided. Sally was just as shameless as she was and went on to date Maya's ex. Maya eventually got over it and met a nice guy and got married. She did invite our parents, but not Sally. My parents didn't go, but I did. Now she is currently pregnant with her first child. My parents reached out to her. And although Maya was skeptical, she agreed to reconcile. So, our family has this big dinner once a year at their place where all the relatives and cousins are invited. Maya came along with her husband, Adam. Sally was also there with her husband, Maya's ex. Throughout the evening, I noticed Sally tried to be closer to Adam, but he would just shove her off. When it was time for dinner, my parents made a toast. Then Sally stood up and said that she was so lucky to be here and that she almost died when she was young, barf. She then redirected to Maya and said, Sis, I know it must be hard for you because your ex is now my husband but thanks for the blessing. I know it must be hard for you to be here knowing how hard it was for you to compete with me, but I applaud your bravery. This was the moment Adam stood up and shouted at Sally, saying how dare she insult his wife who the fact does she think she is. Then the word vomit started, I am just paraphrasing it. You think you are so special because you were a miracle baby. Guess what I was a miracle baby too, but I don't bitch about it like you do. You are such a pathetic woman that the only achievement in your life you have is something that was accidental. What else do you have to show for? Everything you have was basically borrowed from my wife. Even your pathetic husband who spent the entire evening hitting on every female cousin in this room. You are so annoying even your husband doesn't like you. You know what the truth is? You have nothing and you are nothing. You are so shameless and pathetic that you tried to hit on me. You already got her ex and now you want her husband. I would rather die than be with a woman like you whose personality is worth of a paper bag. You have always been jealous of my wife because you always knew you would never be as amazing as she is. That's why you stole from her because that's the only way you could have what she has. There was more, but it was so brutal that Sally was in tears. My parents and relatives were shocked. My parents told Maya, well, aren't you going to do anything? Maya said no and left with her husband. Honestly, even my cousins were silent. I knew no one like Sally. 
I on the other hand was laughing behind my wine glass. My mom noticed and said I am an asshole for laughing at my sister's misery. It has been over a week when this happened. The video of Adam's rant was circulating on our cousin GC. I still laugh at it. I have been Elsie with them ever since. But they are getting a lot of shit for Sally. So, am I the asshole? I tear for kicking my son's girlfriend out of the house. My husband and I recently met my son's girlfriend for the first time. He's been crazy about her. Apparently they've been dating for a year before he decided to have her meet us officially. What he's told us about her all seems great. She just got her degree, was enjoying her job, family-oriented, etc. I'm honestly just glad he's happy with her. My husband and I don't think he's ever been this into someone before. So I feel pretty bad about what I did. Last weekend, he brought her over for dinner. By now we'd been anticipating meeting her with how much our son has been gushing about her. How perfect she is, that she's the one, in his words. They ring the doorbell. We open the door. She looks exactly like her pictures, which is a great start. My son is grinning ear to ear, another great start. We invite them in. She accepts my hug and a firm handshake from my husband, and then she opens her mouth. I'm the one your son puts his penis in. To be frank, I was appalled. I expected my husband to laugh, both he and my son are jokesters, and as annoying as it can be I love it, but this was just too much for me. Maybe I'm reserved, but of all things she could have shared about my son she told us that. One look at my face and my husband knew how much I disapproved. Maybe I let my expectations get too high, and it's unfair to have them, but I reiterate, of all things to say to her boyfriend's parents, whom she'd never met, she chose that. My son was amused at first but when he noticed my reaction his face dropped. I felt like he'd sold me the full package, everything he'd always been looking for in a girlfriend. I was too disturbed by the visual it put in my head, and it translated into anger. I told her to get out, and I wanted to say more about how gross it made me feel but I fortunately left it at that. My son didn't want to go, insisting I give her another chance, but I was too fed up and uncomfortable by this point. Even my husband, who's enjoyed his fair share of raunchy jokes, wouldn't let up. They left and I immediately felt guilty. This was something my son had really looked forward to and I feel like I took that away over a dumb joke. I tried calling to apologize, but he hasn't responded. My husband thinks she's the one who should apologize. I'm considering giving her another chance, but before I do, was I the A.H.? I don't know what to do about an entitled teammate would continuously blows off meetings and where we all have to wait for her. I'm getting so irritated at her and how she's enabled by everyone. We have a weekly team meeting with another teammate and our manager, along with a few people located in India. The rest of us, including the entitled teammate, are us based. This meeting is in the morning for us in the US and during the night for our coworkers in India. It's a rarity she shows up to these meetings without our boss having to send her a chat via Slack teams to remind her. Usually our boss will say, let's give teammate a few minutes. Then it's about a 50 to 50% chance of her joining five minutes late or not showing at all and not responding to our boss. A few weeks ago, our manager actually said after she didn't show, I'll message, teammate, she should be on these meetings. But then this past week after she didn't respond, he was just like, guess she's isn't going to make it. After he made us wait about five minutes before starting. I'm just like, am I crazy? Does he not ask her about skipping these? Does it not register with her if this is a recurring meeting? Then later last week we had two separate outside vendor meetings. With the first one, our rep was like, is teammate joining? We haven't seen her in a while because she never shows up to this meeting which is once a month. Our boss wasn't able to make this particular meeting, so I just said, let's just get started. After this meeting this rep sent a follow-up email to me and my other teammate who did attend and copied our boss. In the email he basically confirmed he implemented XYZ changes in our accounts, excluding the account the entitled teammate works on. In a perfect world our manager would wonder, why is this email only addressed to two of my employees? Why is teammate not on here? Why was her account not included on this? But sadly, 
I don't think he has the skills to access and determine that. However, this teammate actually showed up to the second vendor meeting later in the day. This meeting is one that our boss's boss sometimes attends. I think she only goes to meetings where upper management is there so it looks like she's working. It's been two years of this and I've had it. She is so entitled and complains how she deserves a huge raise and how she's so experienced and yet she can't do basic tasks without trying to get me or our other teammate to hold her hand through it. I'm sick of everyone enabling her and I'm sick of her entitled attitude. She makes careless mistakes and she is lazy. So what should I do? It's not my place to tell my boss to do his job and manage her or ask him. Can, teammate, actually respond to the meeting invites because we always have to wait a few minutes for her show, which is usually after you have to remind her? He can get defensive and I think he would think I'm criticizing him. But what something like? Can we get started? We're all here on time. After my boss says, let's give her a few minutes, be okay, or something like it? I want to indirectly be like we're all here on time, we shouldn't wait for someone who is always so inconsiderate. Should I also reach out to my other teammate to see what he thinks about it? I've stopped helping her, but he immediately helps her out every time. Well in short, teammate either blows off or is late to meetings multiple times per week, and my boss isn't doing anything. I don't want to seem like I'm telling him to do his job but I and my other teammate have to wait at the start of every meeting while the meeting driver wants to wait for this entitled teammate. I don't know how I should handle it. Next time she blows off another meeting that our boss isn't on, should I say something to him like, continues to ask about teammate, and I'm not sure how to handle it, before the meeting or when the rep asks about her, should I just tell him to reach out to my boss separately through email? I've been trying to leave for the past six months, but it's been hard finding a new job.